In statistics, we divide data into two types, qualitative and quantitative. These two types are also reflected in the data structures of R. Let's look at this in a little more detail. When we look at qualitative data, we sometimes divide that into two categories. Some statisticians call, use the word categorical for qualitative data. Qualitative data, sometimes called categorical data, is divided into two groups, nominal and ordinal. Quantitative data is sometimes called numerical data, and it's also divided into two categories, discrete and continuous. So I've got this qualitative data, quantitative data. Each of those are divided into two different subcategories. Let's look at how R is used to identify each of those, uh, how, how R has structures to, to identify those kinds of uh, categories. R allows us to create objects where we store things. For example, when I type x less than dash, notice that that looks like a little arrow there, we're assigning 3 to x. So when I press enter, now I've got this object, this variable x that is that now has a value of 3. Now a very nice thing in R is a function called str, structure. Let's look at the structure of x. x has the structure of a number and it's a 3. Now we can build a vector, let me just call it uh, vec1, by the function c, which is concatenate, let's put a 3 and a 2 and a 7 in that vector. And we can also look at the structure of vec1. So now this vector has the values of 3, 2, and 7 in that particular order. Um, and those are, are considered as, as numbers. Okay, numbers play the role of a, of a continuous uh, quantitative variable. Now let's create a sequence in the following way. Let's, uh, I'll call it vector 2 for right now, less than, dash, and let's look at the numbers from 3 to 9. Okay. If I now look at vector 2, notice it gives me 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But if I look at the structure of vector 2, it is an integer. It has the integers. They're, they're from 1 to, to 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 items there. And they're the, the values 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And they have an integer values. That corresponds to the idea of a discrete variable. So vector 2 is a vector that has seven integers or seven discrete um, numerical values in it. Well, what about uh, categorical variables? Let's look at how we could describe those. Categorical variables describe um, qualities of something. Uh, so we could build a item that we'll call X and we just put things in parentheses. Maybe we're talking about the color of eyes so uh, Y is going to be blue. So now whenever I look at Y I get a blue. If I look at the structure of Y then notice that it's a character blue. So let's create a vector of characters, blue, green, yellow. And if we look at the structure of vector 3, we discover that it's a vector with three items in it. See a sequence of 1 to 3, uh, blue, green, and yellow. Here's another vector, vector 4, uh, that's going to 
have the same elements in it, yellow, blue, and green. Of course, if we look at the structure of vector 4, then there they are, yellow, blue, and green. Now, we might want to have, in any one of these vectors, we might want to have things in a different order. See, automatically, a vector has an ordinality to it. It puts things in order. There's the first item, the second, and so on. So we might want to sort those in a, in a different way. So in one sense, every character vector, character valued vector, has an ordinal structure to it if that ordinal structure makes sense to us in, in some way. It doesn't, we, we don't have to use it. It doesn't have to mean that uh, yellow is best in vector 4 and blue is best in vector 3. But if that does have some, some ordinal value to us, then the order in the vector can handle the ordinality of the, of the data. Let's return to vector 1. It only had three items in it, 3, 2, and 7. If you remember, vector 1 was uh, a numerical vector. Now we're going to assign a, a name to each one of those values in that vector. The name function is what we'll use. When I, when I ask R to tell me what the names of vector 1 are, then it tells me that it's null. There are no names right now. So let's assign some names. So now we're asking R to, to look at the names in vector 1 and assign to that two th names, uh, medium, small, and large, in that particular order. So now when we ask for the names of vector 1, we get that medium, small, large in that order. If I look to see what is in vector 1 in position 1, then it tells me that there are two pieces of information. There's the medium, that's the name of the value, and there's the vector. Let's look at the structure of vector 1 now. It's a, it's a named number vector. That means that each of the numbers is also assigned a name. We'll take uh, advantage of these various data structures throughout the course, but there you have it. Can you now think of some data structures in R that, that correspond to qualitative and quantitative um, variables in, uh, in statistics? Can you see how you could create the idea of nominal and ordinal, um, discrete, I wonder if that's spelled right. Let's check the spelling of that discrete and continuous uh, variables. Okay, we'll look at lots of ways to use those as we go along. That's it.